Hey guys, how's it going? Hope you're doing well. My name is Crown and today I'm going to read you some very interesting stories that I hope that you're gonna love. And now, without further ado, let's go! The morning after a good rowdy kickback in our apartment, my roommate and I went to the orange hardware store after noticing some holes in the walls. Roommate goes to find plaster and I go to paint. I get to the paint department and I'm looking through the paint swatches to remember what our walls look like. Keep in mind, I'm still very hungover. I pick out a color that is probably the closest and if not, then I'll just mix my own paint. Art Miner There is no employee at the paint mixing station so I just put the swatch in my hoodie. To pass the time, I sort the paint swatches properly because of my mild OCD. Then it comes. Ahem. Here is a cast. Not real names, by the way. Employee named George. Manager is Jason. Plus me and Karen. She says, I need you to do your freaking job. That makes me some paint. I stare blankly as hangover is blocking my ability to respond. Hello? I'm talking to you. Mix my paint. Fortunately, my brain finally decides to turn on again. Um, I don't work here. I get cut off by Karen though. Don't freaking lie to me. I saw you sorting the color wool poorly. Only a lazy employee would do that sort of thing. Ma'am, I'm gonna be honest. I'm really hungover. And your screeching is making me want to puke. That statement went as well as you would expect. You're a freaking terrible worker. And terrible person for saying that. I'm going to get your manager and have you fired. And she storms off. Stage left. Once the banshee left, I heard chuckling from down the aisle behind me. Lo and behold, my roommate listened to most of it and is laughing hard. He asked if I got the paint and I explained the first part of the confrontation. We decided to wait for the manager because maybe, maybe, he will mix our paint before we are kicked out. We wait a few more minutes and George walks up oblivious to what just transpired and starts mixing our paint. Enter stage left. Karen was a very annoyed manager on her heels. That's the one that called me a witch and some other very bad names I never said to her. And he needs to be fired right now. George, I'm frankly surprised you'd say such a nasty thing. Um, what now? No, not him. The scrawny one in a hoodie. He even told me he's drunk. Jason, the manager, looks at me, and he looks confused. Ma'am, he doesn't work here, but I can ask him to leave for insulting you. No, he definitely works here. I saw him working. I say, okay then, I quit. You can't quit, I want you fired. By now, our paint is done mixing and I ask George if he'd like to escort us to the front. I've never seen a morning shift employee brighten up so fast. Karen is belligerent and the manager tries to calm her down with coupons. My roommate George and I leave paint as fast as possible and can still hear the screeching from the cashier stand. We pay and George walks us to the car. I explained what really happened and he laughs and says he will tell Jason the situation. Initially my roommate and I were going to go straight home but we had to see the outcome of this. So George agreed he'd come back out once the witch was gone. The police ended up having to be called just to escort her out. Jason and George came out to the car and as George had already explained what happened, Jason profusely apologized. We laughed it off and I said something along the lines of it was worse getting out of bed for despite the hangover. Jason gave us free membership perks and the next time we came in, we were so kindly informed the Karen had come back later that day and vandalized some of the yard equipment always on display. And she was arrested for it. Serves the witch right. A little background. I'm single, having never remarried after my wife passed away from a sudden and deadly illness. And since the virus hit my grandmother, who's in her 90s, and my cousin and her mother have been living with me, Never had any problems with them and they do help around the house as they can and even pitch in on the bills from time to time, which I love about them. My cousin is a special needs boy and has a compromised immune system 
as well as my grandma being old, does not have as strong an immune system as she used to. As such, when I do have to go out, I take the precaution of taking a shower when I come home and put on a fresh set of clothing taking care to not expose them to the worn set before I wash them. Necessary, in my view, was a virus going on at the time. Normally, I would order in whatever we need, but at the time this happened, I could not. Something to do with their system going buggy or something. With that, let's get on with the story. This happened a little earlier today and I'm still fuming over it. Yes, I did press charges. Earlier today, I decided to go shopping even though some members of my household had a high risk for the virus going on. But we still needed food and a few things for a special diet one of them had to eat. Into the store, once I got there, I grabbed a cart and began to shop. I had been shopping for about 20 minutes when I heard someone snapping their fingers. I ignored it because I didn't work there and was wearing jeans and a black shirt with insane clown posse on it. No way anyone could mistake me for an employee. Or so I thought. Next thing I knew, someone yelled in my ear. Are you going to help me or not? I jumped, exclaiming loudly, What the hell? When I got turned around, there was a Karen, short-haired, and clothes one size too small for her, large and with a sore look on her face. She shouted again, Help me now or I'm getting you fired. I told her just as loudly, I don't work here. Now get lost and go find an actual employee. She stepped back, mouth agape like she had never been shouted back at in her entire life and wound up to slap me. I blocked her swing. She tried to slap me again and I blocked it. Now that's the second attempt. But one more and I slap you back which. She screamed, I'm getting you fired. And she stormed off. I yelled, don't let the doorknob hit your behind on the way out which. As she left, I saw her shoulders jerk as if she had gotten hit in the back and kept going. I continued with my shopping albeit angrily. I was done with people at the moment and wanted to finish and get back home. An employee approached me and asked what all the yelling was about, so I told her everything. I could tell she was smirking when I told her what I said as a crazy woman stomped off. So we chatted as I shopped and the employee's words were helping considerably to calm me down when we heard that nasty voice again. That's him. The one who wouldn't help me and threatened me when I asked for his help. I want him fired right now. The manager looked confused. Ma'am, he doesn't work here. I cannot fire customers. Yes, he does. She yelled at him. Fire him right now or I'm filing a complaint with corporate. You're certainly welcome to do that, ma'am, but he does not work here. She lost her crab. Then her face went purple and she charged at me and managed to slap me this time. I normally am opposed to hitting women, but out of pure defensive instinct, I slapped her back hard enough to spin her around and knock her down. By this time, store security had arrived and restrained me thinking I was the one to instigate the incident. The crazy woman got up on the floor and started screaming assault and demanding the police be called. In the meantime, she tried several more times to get to me and slap me again and wound up being restrained herself. During this, the employee had been speaking to the manager over her yelling and told him what had actually happened and how he heard her demands two aisles away and came to investigate. And she had heard her demands two aisles away and came to investigate. Apparently, she had managed to come into the aisle in time to see her try to slap me a second time in my warning to her. When the police arrived, she went off on a profanity-laced rant, demanding I be fired and arrested and that she was going to be able to live off the suit she intended to file. The police walked me a few feet away while she ranted and raved and asked me what happened. So I told them and that the footage from the security cameras will provide proof of my side of the incident. So while one listened to her side of the story, one went and checked the recordings. They came back. One took out his cuffs while the crazy woman looked smug and said some very rude things. But then she was shocked when the officer told her to turn around and to not resist. 
They had to literally drag her out of the store kicking and screaming all the way threatening to have their jobs and screaming how she was a victim here and more I cannot put here because of the language. I was asked a few minutes later by one of the officers if I would like to press charges since from viewing the recordings it was obvious I was defending myself and did not use excessive force. And of course, I said yes. I also found out later if she has harassed other shoppers before but had never assaulted anyone before. Yay me. I enjoy this sub frequently but never really thought I'd have a genuine entitled parent story to share. However, today I crossed paths with a mega Karen and although she seriously disrupted my day, I'm kind of tickled to finally be able to contribute something. The cast. Me, meticulous eraser. The entitled mother excessively monstrous. And the entitled kid. A kid? I work in an office building with about three dozen companies operating on the premises. And because of the odd layout of the building, we have six different parking lots. I prefer using the hidden lot that requires you to drive through one of the indoor lots to reach. Which between being hard to find and all the spots being marked compact is usually less crowded than some of the lots closer to the road. Not to mention that the door into the building from that lot is right next to my office so it is convenient in every way for me personally. Today it was raining cats and dogs when I arrived at the office. For some reason my normal lot was unusually full. However, someone pulled out of a prime space just as I arrived, giving me a much shorter walk through the witness to reach the door. I exchanged polite nod with a guy leaving, then pull into the space behind me. As I'm getting out of my car and grabbing my laptop bag out of the back, I hear some distant car horn honking. But I think nothing of it since it's practically on the other side of the lot. When I turn around to head inside though, the entitled mother rolls up in an oversized SUV and slides to a stop on the wet pavement between me and the building. Splashing me was a bit of bottle in the process. That spot wasn't for you. Excuse me? That parking spot. I was waiting for it and you stole it from me. Me now getting irritated. Where? The highway off ramp? No, I've been looking for a parking spot for 20 minutes. And when one comes open, it's for the first person waiting. At this point, I look up and take stock of the whole row of empty spaces she had ignored to come over and harass me about taking her space. And consider the fact that the claim she's making, that whoever was waiting first gets the first available space. That is not now, nor has it ever been, a real point of etiquette. Me gesturing. There are plenty over there that were open before I even got here. Take your pick? No, I need that spot. You need to move now. Why on earth do you have to have this spot? She gestures to the back seat. So my baby doesn't get wet walking from all the way over there. I looked in the back seat and the kid looking back at me was easily 10 to 12 years old. Also over there couldn't have been more than 50 feet further to walk in the rain. Her kid says, Sup? Um, that's not a baby. He'll be fine. And anyway, your car wouldn't fit in this compact spot. I move and point so she can read the 6 inch tall letters marking the spot as smaller than average. But if you go around that side of the building, there is another lot that isn't compact spaces. Whatever. Are you going to move or not? Your fat self needs the extra exercise anyway. Me already cranky because I hadn't eaten yet, now pissed that this witch and lipstick is talking to me this way. Well, I'm definitely not moving for such a colossal witch. Have fun walking in the rain. I hope you get struck by lightning. I quickly walked away while this charming example of humanity hurled abuse at me. Now, admittedly, about 15 minutes later, once I was settled in at my desk, I started feeling really badly. It's odd to this woman I hope she gets struck by lightning. Even if there was no lightning going on in that rainstorm. I continued to feel bad for all of 5 minutes. When the sound of a car alarm caused me to go to the window and look out. This woman had parked somewhere. 
Gotten out of the car and was now keying the hell out of my driver's side door while the entitled kid recorded it on his phone. I took a quick picture of them in the act on my own phone and I immediately called building security to tell them what was going on. So guess who got arrested for destruction of property and assault? Alright. She also spit on and scratched the security guard who went to confront her. So yeah, assault. And everything that went down from the beginning to the end was practically right under a security camera. So we got a good look at her, her kid, and her car, including the license plate. So no way she's getting away with it. So that's fun. When I end up going to court having to testify and deal with this woman again and so on, I will totally post an update. Recently found the subreddit. And I love the stories, so I decided to share my recent somewhat malicious compliance. It happened approximately a half year ago, when we, me and my wife, traveled to another European country by air to visit some family and friends. We wanted to bring certain local drinks as presents, and since we were traveling with hand luggage only, we could not buy it in the town, as it would not go through the security, so we had to buy it in a duty-free shop. Which is not really duty free as we stay in the EU. At the checkout, the cashier lady scanned our boarding pass, noted that we are connecting in a third country, so the drinks must go into a secure plastic bag, which she must seal. So, if we need to go through security in a connecting airport by any reason, it will not be taken away from us. She prepared two bags and put the four bottles into them. I asked if I can get four bags, one for each of the bottles as it would make it easier to shove them into the different hand luggages. But for some reason, she refused. And she said that she can only put it in a way that two bottles are in each bag. I asked why and she said, this is the way it is. I was not really satisfied with the answer. I was expecting something more serious, for example, something about air travel regulations. So, I concluded it is just that she needs to seal less plastic bags at the end of the day. But my urge to want my bottle separated was still there. So, I told her that if she insists, I will buy the four bottles in four different transactions. So, each bottle will end up in its own plastic bag. She frowned upon us a little and proceeded with the first transaction, scanning the boarding pass, having the bottle put into its individual plastic bag, me paying for it, receipt put next to the bottle, having the bag sealed, making sure she traps as much air as possible in them, repeated three more times, while the queue behind us and the disagreement on her face were constantly growing. It's a win-win. She got her own or the shop's rule complied with, while I still got my bottles in separate bags, later comfortably buried between our clothes after we pushed out all the spare air from the sealed bags. And now we have reached the end of today's stories. Thank you for watching and see you next time.